I'm John Joe, and I'm going to tell you what I think is one of the most weirdest, most interesting things about our universe, and you'll see why. So what I think is weird is that if I have a twin, and the twin goes, so we're both on Earth, and the twin goes on a spaceship going 18 million miles per hour, and he keeps traveling at the speed, he doesn't stop, and he comes back. 50 years later for me, I'm 60 years old, but he is only 40. Okay, so what happened? So why would he be younger than me? Nothing weird happened, like he fell into a wormhole or went back in time. No. One of the most fascinating properties about our universe is that when you move through space, you move less through time. So... His watch, while he was traveling, was ticking slower than my watch on Earth. So, according to my watch, 50 years has passed, and according to his watch, only 30 years has passed. So you could pause this video and think about why this might happen. The answer is that the universe is four-dimensional. <clears throat> And the fourth dimension is time. So that's pretty weird. So what do we mean by dimension? Okay, so right now, we live, we see that we live in three dimensions of space. You know, we can move left, right, that's one dimension, we can move up and down, that's another dimension, and we can move forward and backward, that's another dimension. So there are three dimensions in which we move in. And then in order to explain why this happens, we have to include time as a fourth dimension. And kind of weird, you, know, you can't move up and down through time. You can only move one way through time, and that's in the forward direction. So as far as we know, that's we say it's four-dimensional space-time. We call it space-time. We don't call it space anymore. We're moving through space-time. Okay? And like I said, we say that the traveling twin moves more through space. Or the more he moves through space, the less he moves through time. Or I should say the more faster he moves through space, the less he moves through time. So if my twin was going to go faster, he might only, if he was going faster than this, uh, the clock might have ticked, so he's only, only 20 years has passed instead of 30. If he moves slower, maybe 40 years have passed, and so on. So this is very weird. So, okay, so why does time being another dimension, explain this. Well, I think it's best to start off with an analogy. So let's just say this is north and this is east. So we're just moving, so we have two twins. We have the first twin we're gonna call Jim one and the second twin we call Jim two. So they both move five miles, let's say. However, Jim one moves five miles in the north direction while Jim two moves five miles in the east. Northeast. So, therefore, Jim moves five miles north definitely, while Jim two moves less than five miles north, let's just say three miles north, and let's just say four miles east. Or, yep, three miles north and four miles east. Okay, so now his motion, the, the twin's motion gets shared between the north direction and the east direction. So now we say time is a dimension. We say time is a direction too. Well, dimension, um, the <laughs> direction, dimension. So Jim one is at Earth. So the twin staying at Earth just moves through time. So he moves 50 years through time. Jim two moves the same amount of distance through space time, except Jim one is only moving through time. And then Jim two is also moving through space as well as time. So then therefore, the second twin who is moving through space ages less than the twin just moving through time. And this happens even at low speed. So even when we're going in a car, time is ticking slower for you moving in this car going 60 miles per hour than it would have been sitting on your couch at home. But the effect is just so small. Don't try to become younger by driving a long time. Don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't think you'll, you won't be able to notice the time. You have to go very fast. You have to go like you know, 
like millions of miles per hour to notice this effect. So now you can ask, okay, well, we explain why time goes slower because the universe is four-dimensional, but then why is the universe four-dimensional? Okay, so we have to have some grounding with the Earth. Like, where did this idea come from? So this idea came from an experiment that was done that shows that everyone sees light moving at the same speed. Okay. So this seems... Uh, we should understand what this means. Okay, so let's let's start to do this. So for example, we can start off with a ball. So we have these two girls playing catch. One throws the ball 10 miles per hour this way. And they're driving in a truck going 20 miles per hour. So this girl, because she's moving on this platform with the ball and then the other girl, she sees... She measures the, the speed of the ball to be 10 miles per hour. But how about in the minute, how about if there's a man in the grass, sitting in the grass, and he sees the ball moving this way and the, at 10 miles per hour, the truck moving this way at 20 miles per hour, how fast does he see the ball? So you could pause this and think about it, but the answer would be that the two speeds add up. So he gets 30 miles per hour. And you could see this, you know, you could watch something moving and then you'll see that the ball's motion comes from the car, and then whatever happens inside the car. So it comes from the girl throwing plus the car, and you get this. Okay. Now, what if the girl, instead of a ball, she shines a flashlight? Okay, so what does uh, this girl see the light moving at? Well, she sees it moving at the speed of light, which I'm going to call C, because this is a... Uh, it, this is a big number. This is about 670 million miles per hour. So I don't want to keep writing this, so I'm just going to say the speed of light is called C. And you'll see why. So she sees the speed of light moving at C. But then we also said that everyone, there's an experiment done, that everyone sees light moving at the same speed. So this man also sees this beam of light moving at this speed. Okay, so what does this mean? So based on what we did on the page before this, we have the speed of light plus 20 miles per hour equals the speed of light. Does this make sense? Remember I said that the, the ball gets the motion from the car and from the the girl throwing it. So if the girl shoots a flashlight and the light moves at the speed of C, then how does it make sense that this guy also sees the ball or the light moving at the speed of C when it should also get motion from here? Well, the only way to make sense of this is that time is moving slower for the girls in the car, so they see the light moving at at the speed of C, at the speed of light, and then also the man sees the light moving at the speed of light. So this is this is where this fourth dimension comes in. And we say that okay, uh, someone moving, um, sees the speed of light. So someone moving, time slows down in order for them to see the light moving at the same speed. And we reach a conclusion that time slows down for moving things, and then that's when we get the uh, um, the faster you go, the more you move through, the faster you move through space, the slower you move through time, and that's how we get the the fact that the universe is four dimensional. And this idea is what made Einstein famous. Um, also, you you guys might have seen E equals mc squared. This also is this, along the same ideas, where Energy is E, and then mass is just you know, how much you, is, is equivalent to how much you weigh, and then C is the speed of light. And this is huge. So if you take like a very thin speed of light is so big, since you take a very small mass, so let's just say maybe one pound is 0.1 kilogram, 
and you have uh, 670 million times 670 million. You could do this on your own. <laughs> and yeah, that is a lot of energy. Considering that maybe uh, a ball moving, a ball, um, a one pound ball would only have, moving at 10 miles per hour, would only have about 50. The energy would e be equal to 50. Uh, we're just going to call it, when I say it's joules, you don't need to know this. And then this is about a lot more joules than that. So that's pretty insane. Um, maybe I'll give you a homework on this. But it's also possible to calculate. So Einstein, not only did he come up with this idea, but he also came up with a way to calculate this. Uh, I'm not going to go through the calculation because it's uh, it involves some math, but pretty much um, we could say that a girl that moves at half the speed of light uh, and she watches a boy on earth do a dance that lasts 10 minutes, uh, she will only see the boy dancing for about eight minutes or uh, about eight and a half minutes. So the girl on the spaceship, by the time this boy gets done doing this 10 minutes dance, only about eight and a half minutes pass by on her watch. Okay, and then the faster you go, the the slower time ticks down. So if you go pretty fast, if you go closer and closer to the speed of light, a hundred years on Earth might only a hundred years on Earth might only be one second for you. And the faster you go, the faster you go uh, towards the speed of light, uh, the slower time is, and essentially time would freeze. But however to go at speed, you need a lot of energy. And in order to go faster than light, you need an infinite amount of energy. So all the energy, in, so you can't go faster than the speed of light, pretty much. Even if you have all the energy in the entire universe, you can't go faster than the speed of light. So that is a maximum speed that we could travel, which is pretty weird when you think about it. And this is because you know, time slows down and all of this. So it is pretty weird. Okay, so speed of light is very important. Right? We see that if we try going to the speed of light, pretty much time freezes, we need a lot of energy, a lot of weird things happen. But it's pretty curious that the light, maybe in your room right now, or coming out of your computer, or just any, any light around you from the sun, it moves at this speed all the time. So, how does the light see you? So put your, try and put yourself in the place of the light in your room. If we move the speed of light, we'll see every, like the whole, like millions of years happen in a fraction of a second. If we move close to the speed of light, we'll see millions of years pass by in a fraction of a second. So what does the light see as it goes from your light bulb to your eyeball? So that's what I want you to think about. It's very interesting. Thank you. I hope that we could connect. Uh, maybe through Zoom or something, and we could, uh, questions, you guys can come up with questions, so please come up with questions, and then if, if the, the module is set up on Canvas, uh, you could answer questions, and I'd be happy to help you, or uh, you could share your ideas with me about why all this happens, why you think. Thank you.